All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both published by Simon & Schuster Saga Press today. We're going to be reviewing book number one in the Thieves' World Saga. And it's just called Thieves' World. And as you can see, it's book number one. Now, right here, I've got... These came out in 1979. And here I've got the original paperback I bought when I was a kid. And the, the first six books were all painted, were all done, the illustrations were all done by, you know, Walter Valez. And they were pretty cool. I loved them. But then um, the series extended beyond six books to actually 12 books. And they reissued all the covers with um, this different cover design and artwork. So I've got, I've got the entire set here with the Gary Rodell covers. And then the first six that I originally bought when I was a kid that have the Walter Velez covers. So, you know, the reason we're talking about the covers is because we always review the covers on this channel. And that's what we're going to do first. So here is the original Walter Velez cover. Just looking at this cover gives me chills. Because this was one of the books that... Now, I bought... The first book I ever bought and read as a kid was The Sword of Shannara... And of course, you know, I've talked about this Hildebrandt book cover a lot and how it gives me chills and takes me back in time. Well, this Thieves' World cover by Walter Velez does the same thing. I mean, look at these guys. Look at these, look at these rogues in here. We've got the, uh, we've got the bartender and these, and these outlaws, these scoundrels sitting at the bar. Man, guy with the blue star on his face and this dude and this rough looking dude. And I was like, I got to know who Thieves' World is the title. I was like... I saw that as a kid, and I'm like, I gotta know what's going on, because the first book I ever read, Sword of Shannara, then I read Tolkien, then I read Lloyd Alexander's Pridean Chronicles, all of the, all three of those were pretty rated PG epic fantasies. Then I picked up Thieves' World, <laughs> which is literally the father of Grimdark. And I, and I felt like I was reading something I wasn't supposed to be reading as a kid. You know, this was rated R stuff. This was R-rated stuff. And I was like, oh my gosh. Well, that cover... Well, then they reissued the entire series with the Gary Rodell covers, which are also pretty damn good. I mean, that's a great painting in of itself and a great cover design. So I'm just glad that I've got the original six covers plus the reissues. And now let's talk about the story. And I've even got the Thieves' World game role-playing game so let's talk about this came out in 1979 what is thieves world by robert Asprin? it's actually an anthology of stories that make up in a novel robert Asprin and his buddies were at a convention and they were like hey wouldn't it be cool to if uh conan the barbarian was in a in the same story as elric and wouldn't it be cool if elric and Fafard and the Grey Mouser could go on adventures together? And wouldn't it be cool if, like, all, uh, like, Tolkien's characters could meet up with Elric and Conan? And, and, and wouldn't it be, what if we could just do a mashup of all of our favorite characters? And they're like, well, we can't because there's copyright and trademark issues. But let's do it ourselves. Let's all, let's get a lot of famous science fiction and fantasy authors of the 1960s and 70s. And let's have them come up with some iconic characters. And we will let them do short stories that will stick in this series. And all of the stories will tie together and create a novel after novel after novel after novel where the characters interact. The only rule is you can take anybody's character that you want and you can um, have them in your own story with your character. You just can't kill them off. But you can do whatever else you want to with them. <laughs> and so what they did is they, they, they got it. They got a publisher on board and they got some great, so they got some of the great science fiction writers of the time, like uh, Lynn Abbey, Paul Anderson, Robert Asprin, John Brunner, Joe Haldeman, author of The Forever War, Andrew J. Offit. I mean, and then, then they even got even bigger names for the later volumes. So these 12 volumes, and then they got a bunch of spinoff, like David Drake, wrote this other spin-off book. Like we've got all of these spin-off books, Shadow Spawn, and all of these other spin-offs with David Drake's spin-off book. And then we've got another trilogy. And I mean it, it just back in the 
back in the 80s and 90s, these books were all the rage in the bookstores. Everybody was reading these if you were into fantasy. So let's talk about, I said we're going to do an in-depth study on book number one. So let's get into it. The background is, as I just gave it to you, we gave, we gave you the covers in the background. And then, so what is this world that they've created? So Robert Asprin, he did the world building for all the other authors. He's like, okay, we're going to have this town. It's going to be called Sanctuary. I will come up with the history of this town and the history of the continent that this town is on and the political, the political structure, the monetary structure, the religious structure. I will come up with all of that, and you guys can have your iconic little character. You guys can create your characters and can play in this world. And so that's what we do. The first part of the book, and let me just read the back jacket, and then I will re re uh, we'll talk about the first part of the book. So the back jacket gives us an idea of what's happening. So all of the famous authors have created sanctuary and peopled it with wonders. There's one thumb, the crooked bartender of the vulgar unicorn. There's Enos Yorl, magician and involuntary shapeshifter. Then there's Jubal, the ex-gladiator and slave who is now a pillar of the community. There's Lythande, the star-browed magician and sword fighter. There's Cap'n Vera, the minstrel, the only honest man in sanctuary. Or is he? And then there's Hans Shadowspawn. And many more. These are just some of the unforgettable players you will meet in a stage where murder, mayhem, and skulldraggery, with always a little bit of magic, are the order of the day. So that's on the back. And then what happens is we get, we, we get into the introduction. We get a map. We get a map of Sanctuary, which is cool. Like we get a map of the little peninsula that Sanctuary sits on. Then we get a map of Sanctuary itself, the city where all the buildings take place. And so what, what's the background of this? Well, in the introduction, Robert Asprin, the person that edited all this together and, and sort of spearheaded the, the whole thing, he writes a, sort of a prologue that gives us the backstory and history of Sanctuary and where at we are in Sanctuary. So the way, and he does it in a clever way. So what he does is he's got the storyteller, Hakim. And Hakim sits in the town square and he tells stories to the children. And so the children are like, tell us the history of Sanctuary. Tell us the history of Sanctuary. And so he tells us. And that's a great way for the reader to learn about the history of Sanctuary. How, um, you know, it was founded by slaves and thieves and gladiators that were looking for a place to hide. And they named their town Sanctuary. Because it was a sanctuary for pirates, thieves, and gladiators and people that just didn't fit in normal society and were looking to hide. And, uh, and then um, it's now it's kind of being ruled by this young prince named Catechithus. He's a very young prince. He's never ruled anything before. And he's got these five bodyguards that are known as the Hellhounds. And they are Zalbar, Born, Raskula, Armin, and Quag. And these five Hellhounds, along with Prince Catechithus, sort of are in all the stories a little bit because they are kind of like the the bullies, if I, if you would, of the story. Like they're kind of like they're like they're like the man, the power, the structure. The uh, they're exactly what the thieves, pirates, and ex-slaves don't want to have to deal with on a daily basis. But they are there in sanctuary, keeping the peace, or so as best they can. And so that's the setup for. Sanctuary, and that's the first about 20 pages. And then we get our first story. Keep in mind, all of these stories, though written by different authors, and there's eight of the stories, even though all eight stories are written by different authors and they're short stories about their particular character, what we're getting is the way Robert Asprin and these authors wrote this is it's one continual novel, each just doing a different chapter, focused on a different character. But all of it interweaves. All of all of the stories connect together and interweave into one overall sort of cohesive plot. And it's dynamite. And the same thing is done with the entire thing. The entire 12 book series, plus the spin-off books and the other things that they've got here. It all is one cohesive sort of plot. It would just would make it. If you've watched Black Sails or Hell on Wheels or even Game of Thrones, this would make a great HBO series. So, first story is called Sentences of Death, and it's by John Bruner, who's a great science fiction writer in the 70s and 80s. It's about Jarvina, a scriptorium. She's like a scriptorium's apprentice, 
and she deals with like uh, old scrolls and old script and things like that. And um, she's just a street urchin. And I'm telling you, she is, Jarvina is the most gritty and damaged street urchin of any fantasy book ever. I mean, there's a lot of fantasy books like Lies of Locke Lamora and, and a million of them about street urchins that turn thieves. And I'm telling you, Jarvina, she's had a worst past and a more gritty awful horrible past than any of them combined and anyway so that's who we get the that's our first introduction to thieves world is through her eyes and then we move to book to 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 story number two the face of chaos told by lynn abbey and lynn abbey we meet with this is where we get to meet illyria and dubrow um, Illyria is a fortune teller again sort of a street urchin she's a fortune teller and uh, we also get to meet in this story many of the other characters that are going to take that are going to be with us throughout and that's um, uh, Maul and Torchholder and Jubal the Gladiator Jubal the Gladiator and Lythande the magician slash sword fighter Cap and Vera the minstrel and um, you know, it's it's got a great tie-in with the, the these cards that she's a fortune teller with these cards, and one of the cards is the face of chaos, and it and then there's this twist with an anvil. I won't get into it. We're not going to do spoilers. We're just going to kind of do anyway. Book three or story three, the gate of the flying knives is by classic science fiction writer Paul Anderson, and this is about Cap and Vera, the minstrel who is probably one of my favorite characters in this in this book and I do believe he is represented on the cover by that one there he's this one there that is Cap and Vera the minstrel and uh, we get to follow his adventures um again his story Cap and Vera's story ties right in with the story before it where he's still dealing with the fortune teller Alira and Dubro and and then they meet Jamie the Red Jamie the Red which is another character in the story and then, um, and then we get the the introduction of One Thumb, One Thumb, who is represented by this guy. He is the owner of the vulgar unicorn. Maybe you can see the vulgar unicorn banner here. He's the owner of the vulgar unicorn, where all the characters. It's the saloon. It's the dirty saloon where all the characters sort of come together and meet. Anyway, then in um, book number four is called shadow spawn which everybody that's read thieves world will tell you that shadow spawn is the highlight of the thieves world universe shadow spawn is represented by the guy right in the middle that dark brooding fellow in the middle and he is the most deadly assassin and thief in fantasy literature and he was the first the first Every other assassin and thief that you have seen in any book ever takes their root. I mean, Hans Shadow Spawn was the first. I mean, they all build off of what Thieves World did with Hans Shadow Spawn. And Hans Shadow Spawn is the first character that we see that actually confronts Prince Catechithis and the Hellhounds and actually fights them, gets physical with them. And he kind of gains their respect. And uh, I won't say if anybody dies in that altercation, but it's cool and it's a, it's, it involves a, a deep well that maybe one or two or three or four characters might fall into. Anyway, Shadow Spawn, probably the um, most iconic character that came out of the Thieves World um, books. Then we get um, book story number five. The Price of Doing Business by Robert Asprin, the guy who put it all together. That is where we get to meet Jubal, the um, ebony-skinned ex-slave, ex-gladiator, who is now sort of running a little mercenary camp of his own in the middle of Sanctuary. And he's kind of a, at odds with the Hellhounds and Prince Catechithis and pretty much everybody else. We get to learn a lot about the slave trade that runs through Sanctuary book. Story number six is called Blood Brothers by Joe Haldeman, who wrote The Forever War. So like I said, we got an all-star cast of, um, you know, and I didn't even mention the guy that wrote Shadow Spawn was Andrew J. Offutt, who wrote a lot of the Conan stories back in the day. And he did a lot of old classic science fiction. Forgot to mention that, the Shadow Spawn writer, Andrew J. Offutt. Blood Brothers, Joe Haldeman, 
it, blood that's about that's a story just about one thumb the owner of the vulgar unicorn and that's a good story we get to see the we get to see the world through the owner of the saloon's eyes. Then story seven is called Mertis by Christine Deweese. It's about the, a brothel owner named, um, well, it's about a brothel and a brothel owner. And then we get one of our other main, main iconic characters, Lythandi. Um, and, you know, the hellhounds and the brothel. The hellhounds, Prince Catechithus and the hellhounds are giving the brothel trouble. They want to collect taxes from the brothel and they don't want that. But then they, they sort of, Lythandi is represented by that character there. The, 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 the sorcerer of the blue star. I think that that's what they call him. Um, what do they call it? Uh, yeah, the, uh, the secret of the blue star. It's, it's just like a, um, this story, uh, the, the story of Mertis and the brothel is almost like a mob story where kind of like the hellhounds are the mob and they're coming to collect taxes and, and, they, uh, and we need the uh, sorceress the sorcerer okay here's another thing this is one of the first first and and we don't find out in book one i'm going to do a little spoiler for the series here we find out later on that lythandi the sorcerer it's actually one of the first genderless characters in fantasy fiction uh, and it was written by marion zimber bradley book number eight is specifically about this character and it is called the secret of the blue star because he he's got the blue star on the forehead and then later in later books we find out that it's a, actually a genderless character so we've got that to look forward to um you know this is just uh this was a pretty in-depth look at this series that i love and we did book one so we're going to do book two soon tales from the vulgar unicorn and again it's got um, a Walter Velez cover, and uh, but you know it's also got you know Tales from the Vulgar Unicorn with the other cover by Gary Riddell. Anyway, we'll go through each one of these over the course of a few years. We'll get to each one of these, and we will do an in-depth review of each one and each story, and then we will move on to the some of the standalone novels that were that came of Thieves' World that are over here. And so we got all that to look forward to. I hope you and I hope you guys. These need to be republished. I mean, you can only find these on eBay now and rare book sites, but they need to be reissued and republished because they are every bit as dynamite as any of the grimdark stuff that we're reading now. So anyway, there we go. Thieves' World, book one. I give it a 10 out of 10. Man, this stuff was iconic. Iconic fantasy.